Hello. Hi. Welcome. Oh my God. This break live is so exciting. We're here with Carolina Gutierrez, who is a social media star. Some of her 72,000 followers on Instagram are watching right now. They're seeing her glamorous photos, but now they're going to watch her cook. Carolina, tell us, what are you making? <laughs> I'm actually going to be making my famous meatless sweet chickpea pasta. Good. Get cooking, good looking. All right, let's do it. Okay, I'm already meal prepped and everything because I wanted to be ready to go. I've never done this before, Jane, so I'm a little nervous, Don't but nervous. just bear with me. I already got the water boiling right here on the stove. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chickpea pasta. I chose to use some rotini pasta. Let's see. It's let's, completely let's see it. I want to see the package really up close so everybody can see because people are ordering this stuff. You know, we're all at home and we got to order good stuff. So you can have pasta that's not just going to put on weight. It's, exactly. It's a super food. And not only that, Jane, but it's actually gluten-free for anybody that is gluten-free. I know that's a big thing right now. Uh, and it's not just for a fate, but it's actually for health reasons. Uh, I've been trying to go a little more gluten-free. It's it's a per personal thing. I feel like sometimes gluten makes me a little bloated. So I like to choose sometimes gluten-free options. And wow. this one right here, not only is it going to give you the gluten-free option, but it's also going to be high in protein. So... Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yes. So I'm about to dump this right here on my boiling water. And I think I'm going to do two boxes because I'm hungry and I'm going to be sharing food with Will. So we're going to be uh, eating all of this food afterwards. I'm a big foodie. So I like to eat a lot, a lot of food. So I'm going to put both boxes in here. And wow. I'm going to let that boil for a little bit. <laughs> And now let's get to the good part of it, which is the sauce and the meatballs. Uh -huh. So for that, I'm going to be using these meatballs right here from Gardein. Let me show you. These I have in my fridge myself. They're so good. They're so delicious. This is probably one of my favorite um um, brands, Gardein, because they have such a great selection of substitutes. So for anyone that is trying to go vegan, that is trying to think about different ways to supplement their meat, chicken, pork, mm -hmm. fish, they have everything. So of course, meatballs is not the exception. You're going to get lots of protein. Uh, mm -hmm. It's actually a lot less calories than your regular you know, meat, meat beef meatballs and i'm about to dump this entire thing in my pan okay. which is actually already heating up in medium heat and i'm gonna use a little bit of olive oil so i'm just gonna pour this on my pan yeah go for it and, <laughs> and i'm gonna pour the entire bag because like i said i'm hungry but we gotta you know feed the hungry and okay. <laughs> I'm trying to follow my own recipe because I gave okay. you a recipe and I'm like, usually I eye everything. I don't follow a recipe. This is kind of like something that I kind of made up, but I wanted to keep it, you know, but specific to the ingredients. And meatballs, like uh, spaghetti and meatballs. People have been, you know, that's like a traditional dish. Everybody eats spaghetti and meatballs. This yes. way, doing without killing an animal, without giving yourself high cholesterol, leading to a heart attack. <sighs> Thank you. Without Thank you. contributing to climate change, without contributing to animal torture, without exploiting the workers who are dying of COVID in the slaughterhouses. I mean, it, it it's, we, we don't need to, we can okay. have our spaghetti and meatballs without eating, just animal free, animal free spaghetti and meatballs. Tell and us, you know what? Yes. Yes. Well, no, I was going to say. Tell, tell us about your vegan journey and how, I know you're a well-known transgender activist, how it all came together. Well, let me first start by saying that it's been seven years and I am so proud of myself for not only uh, becoming a vegan in the kitchen, but becoming a vegan in my entire lifestyle. I'm talking clothing, I'm talking accessories, I'm talking um, going to a theme park and not wanting to support places like SeaWorld that are yeah. abusing animals right. uh, every single day. So that is something that was progressive for me. I decided to start veganism 
back, you know, seven years ago because I was having a lot of issues with dairy. Dairy is actually causing me to have breakouts in my face. I was having a lot of digestive issues. But there is something, Jane, that I have to tell you. I always felt grossed out by the idea of eating flesh. It's something that always just, it, it was hard for me. Uh, and I, I think once I started putting all the dots together, it kind of clicked. I was like, wait a minute, like me, this is probably why I never liked eating animals because I just feel repulsed by the idea of eating animals. And that's just something that started seven years ago and it's progressed into, you know, something that I am, it, it's a, it's, it's not, it's yeah. not even a lifestyle. It's like everything, everything and, about my life yeah. is vegan. Yeah. And let me ask you a quick question. And I don't yes. want you to burn your food, but we can. <laughs> one question. What's how does what how does your vegan activism and your transgender activism intersect? Is there an intersect? Oh my gosh! Oh my god! Uh, that's probably the best question you could ask me because as a transgender woman, I've realized that having a, a being born transgender taught me compassion. It taught me to think outside the box. It taught me that we need to sometimes learn before we discriminate because sometimes a lot of the times ignorance is rooted in fear. And, and sometimes if we don't learn what we're afraid of, then we're just going to continue to push away and, and act with violence against what we don't know. And so I took that experience of being transgender and I, and I applied it to veganism and I realized it was very parallel in that regards. It made me feel that I could understand animals from that point of view, you know, they're the underdogs. They don't, people don't understand them. People don't understand their language. And that's something that I, as a trans woman felt my entire life since I was little, so. By the way, I'm about to pour some garlic. Go for it. My bowl. <laughs> and this is going into the meatballs with the olive oil. Um, a little bit of garlic. It's all being minced together. And I think I'm going to start pouring the onions. I got some onions right here. And um, that's always a staple for me. It's like garlic and onions. It's like, how could you not cook with garlic and onions? Like it's the best ingredients ever so <laughs> I'm right there with you so yeah it's just something that is it's evolved you know it, it started like I said it started with me having acne then I realized wait a minute this is deeper than that and then it just progressed into a lifestyle it progressed into a movement for me it progressed into me wanting to actively fight for animal rights wanting to speak up about veganism, wanting to turn everyone around me vegan because I feel like <laughs> I finally had this veil that came off of me. And I was like, wait a minute, everyone needs to know the truth. Why is everyone still blind by this truth that, that we, it's in front of us, but we, so a lot of times we don't want to see it. You know, We want to turn the blind eye. You and know, that's the problem. I do a lot with the LGBTQ community, uh, being an out mm -hmm. person myself. Um, and I have struggled with the idea that sometimes um, communities that should find a natural commonality with mm -hmm. uh, veganism don't. I mean, none of these animals in factory farms are making love. They're all raped. Uh, oh, the babies 100%. are abducted. Everybody's murdered. It's a rape abduction murder operation. So you'd think natural mm -hmm. feminists, right, would be yeah. um, on board with, uh, you'd think that the LGBTQ community would be on board, uh, but often not. Uh, I remember I had this argument with this woman who was promoting uh, BLTs for LGBT. And I said, you know what? I, I'm all, I'm all for I remember you talking about that. Right, but yes. I, you don't have to kill pigs to uh, support gay rights. And uh, um, so I think the key is to expand our circle of compassion beyond our fingertips, you know, beyond impacts us directly. And now it is yes. impacting us directly because obviously we're all suffering a pandemic, which is a zoonotic disease that jumped from animals to humans and first cropped up mm -hmm. in a killing market in China. Okay, show us what you got. We got a little heavy there, but let's show us. Okay, what there you go. Sorry. I just wanted to, you know, keep mm. it visual. Wow. Uh, yeah. So we got the meatballs, yum, and then we got some garlic, and I actually just dumped a little bit of the mushrooms 
Um, so we got mushrooms, garlic, we got some onions, everything is cooking in the in the pan. At the same time, I just uh, tasted my pas my pasta, my pasta, and um, it's it's getting it's getting close to being done. So soon I'll be dumping the water, and in the meantime, we're gonna we're gonna focus on the sauce because I got a couple of ingredients, Jane, that you're gonna love. And uh, oh, it, this is something that I came up myself because I like sometimes mixing sweet and sour together, like sweet and salty. Yes. that's kind of one of my favorite things, and. Um, yeah. That's Let's something do I'm gonna be doing right now. So, <laughs> okay. So the next thing I'm gonna dump into my meatballs, I think it's gonna be the bell peppers. And one of the things that I like to do when I'm cooking is I like to keep my veggies very colorful. And I'm sure you know about this, but the more colorful your veggies, the more vitamins, the more antioxidants you're getting. So I like to always keep that in mind because it makes me feel like I'm doing something good. You know, like it's not mm -hmm. just about the flavor; it's also about you know, doing something healthy for yourself. So we're gonna Ooh. dump those in there. It's looking very nice and colorful. It's gonna look like a rainbow, I'm telling you. It's like perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is, okay, this is one of my special ingredients. Check this out. And probably not something that I advise to do all the time, but once in a while, Let's get a little crazy and add a little bit of maple syrup because why not? And I feel like this is only going to add a little bit of sweetness without um, taking it too far. So I have a hand spoon, uh, I think it's one hand, uh, spoonful of um, maple syrup. Hi, yeah. I'm forgetting my own ingredients. Maple syrup. Yes. Interesting. I know, right? Yeah, that's, I wouldn't have thought that, but I can see now it's like a little sweet, sour, because listen, they put sugar in everything these days. So we, now we're finding a healthy way to add a little sweetness without yes. doing something that's going to pack on the pounds. And Jane, I have a question for you. So what do you yeah. think about honey? Do you think honey? Yeah. No, no, not vegan. Vegans, we not need vegan. to stay completely away. <laughs> These animals are exploited. Thank They're you. Honey uh, bee prisons. And, you know, the collapse of the bees will uh, per uh, precipitate a horrific collapse of the ecosystem, which is yes. send us all bye-bye. So, no. Uh -huh. we honey. We don't need to exploit any animals. None. No, no animals. Absolutely. No, I know that's, that is something that I had to learn the hard way because when I first started being vegan, I didn't realize about honey. It, it never even crossed my mind. Yeah. And, and But it, you know what? It was a great experience because it made me realize that that's what happens with a lot of people before they become vegan. They're just not aware of their own impact right. on right. animals. And I wasn't aware of the impact that I was putting on when I was consuming honey, even after I became vegan, not realizing that honey wasn't vegan. So... I switch from using honey to using like maple syrup to using agave every time I want to sweeten up anything that I'm making, a dessert, sometimes well, my us, pasta. Show us, so. the latest. show us the latest. What we got there now? Okay. So we still got the meatballs cooking. They're starting to get a little more brown, which is mm -hmm. nice because we want to get that nice brown color. Yeah. I'm actually about to dump the water out of the uh pasta because it's getting ready i think it's i just tasted it and it's pretty on point so don't mind if i do okay i'm gonna take this banner down so we can see even better what you're doing Woo! Ooh, look yeah. at all that steam hello yeah that. that's fantastic Ooh, it's like good for your skin it's like <laughs> 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 okay so i think this is the pasta is like ready to go. It's like perfect. I don't know if you guys can see from there, but yeah, it's, again, it's really it's good. Pea pasta, which is packed with all sorts of nutrients and protein and everything else. And so oh, you good. have your pasta. So delicious. And you're in obviously very good shape. And uh, does your vegan diet help you with that? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it is. It is one of the, <clears throat> it's one of the main, <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry, can I get me some water? <coughs> Here, I I'll talk in a <coughs> while you guys, will you figure that out? Um, but what I was going to say was, uh, I also use that pasta here. I'm here in my kitchen and uh, I love using that pasta because if you're just eating white pasta, it can be uh, a lot of carbs without the nutrients. 
Whereas if you do the pasta that um, is made of chickpeas, it's like a, a superfood. So you're everything with veganism turns something that's a guilty pleasure into a superfood. If you think about it that way, you're totally 100% um, able to uh, you know, realize the benefits and it's guilt-free eating. Okay, we are back. I'm back. I'm okay. alive. <laughs> All right, come, come back. What were, oh. where were you? Okay, I was about to dump some tomatoes. Okay. Into my sauce. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So we're putting tomatoes. We're going to put some spinach. Oh, spinach, lovely. as you know, it's full of protein. Yeah. Um, so it's really good for you, especially for those people that are worried about not getting enough protein in a vegan diet. Spinach. Well, that's such nonsense. I mean, there's more protein calorie per calorie in kale than there is in steak. Oh my God, it's so, so silly. It, so that's silly. Just a marketing ploy that has been created by uh, the meat industry. And and you, know, you can only absorb so much carbon uh, protein in your body anyway. They've shown that the gladiators, who were the toughest guys on the planet, were mostly plant based. Let's see. What do we got there? Whoa. Okay, so Look at how beautiful that's looking. We got all the colors. We got the tomatoes, we got the bell peppers, we got the mushrooms, the garlic, everything is mixed in, the spinach, the meatballs are the pretty vegan much on point. I always say vegan meatballs. I never just say meatballs. Vegan. The thing is that people join us, they don't know what we're cooking. When they hear meatballs, they think dead animal, but no, we're not no, eating no, any no, animal. No, no, no. no animal no. Any for this meal. <laughs> Yes, let's carry on. Uh, the next ingredient that I like to add on is actually a little bit of Indian curry. Woo! Right here. So that's one of the things that I like to always add in a lot of my meals. I am obsessed with curry. So we're just going to sprinkle that over and just let that marinate with the meatball, the vegan meatballs. Hi. <laughs> uh, and now I think it's time to do the sauce. So oh, yeah. right here we got the classico tomato and basil uh, pasta sauce. Yeah, beautiful. This is 100% vegan and it's actually gluten-free as well. So like I said, I've been trying to use more uh, gluten-free ingredients. So Yeah, and I want to say people sometimes say to me, I've had people say to me, oh, I've never had a vegan meal in my life. You ever had uh, pasta marinara? You've had a vegan meal. Continue on right here. <laughs> okay, so I'm pouring the sauce into directly into the pan with all the ingredients. I like my pasta to be very saucy. So for those of you that might not like it, you don't have to use the entire jar. I'm actually using the entire thing because like I said, I like it saucy. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh -huh. All right, Jane, are you ready for this? Uh, I am. <laughs> I'm about to add another one of my secret ingredients. This is actually a little Moscato. Ooh. I know. I know. It's early, but why not? <laughs> so this is a little bit of wine, and I'm going to pour these into the sauce. Uh-huh. And finally, this is another one of my little secrets. Um, I actually like to add a little bit of almond milk into my sauce. And the reason why I do this is because a lot of times the pasta sauce can be a little thick and sometimes it can be a little too chunky. So I like to thin it out a little bit with some almond milk. I think it adds some uh, so like a little bit of a different texture and also a little bit of extra flavors. So we're just going to dump all of that milk in there. I know it sounds weird. I told my mom earlier and she was like, wait, you're adding milk and wine. And I'm like, mom, it's not milk. It's almond milk, first of all. <laughs> and then two, it's amazing because I've done it a bunch of times. And, uh, and you know it. what? The, the, the alcohol cooks off. I know exactly. that I don't drink alcohol at all. And I, I, if it cooks off, it's fine. <laughs> exactly. It's, yeah. it's, it's just a little bit and it's optional. It's just like a little kick that you can add into yeah. it. So. Uh, but let me just kind of show you what it's looking like. It's actually getting heavy, so I have to be careful. But this Ooh, is wow. super saucy, super delicious. And I don't know. What's the I don't flame? know. What flame do you put on it? How, what's the 
because I have a tendency, to be honest with you, to burn everything. And so I'm trying to understand because sometimes it's too low and it's not cooking fast enough. And then I'll put it on high and then I'll walk away and then I'll come back and it's burnt. Actually, I've been cooking the sauce in medium heat uh, just because I'm not used to multitasking like this. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to. But usually I'll put it a, a little bit above medium just because I like to cook, to cook a little bit faster. But because we're talking and everything, I just put it on medium and that seems to be working pretty, pretty good. And um, I think the main thing is you want to make sure the meatballs are cooking first so you can get them to that nice golden color that you like and that they can cook full through before you start dumping all the veggies and everything. So <clears throat> great. All right. Well, I think I'm going to start serving in the plate because I mean, we've got the pasta. It's ready. The sauce yeah, is ready. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. This is exciting. And I wanted to, you know, be a little extra today. So I decided to oh, show us that. Give us a tight shot. This looks great. I wish How I could it is. Through, the, through the camera and grab that a little tighter. I just want to see. Oh, it. my gosh. So I decided to uh, pair the pasta with a little bit of some side dishes. One, it's my little tortillas that oh. I love. They're the best. They're gluten-free. They're super easy. They come in this package right here. Oh. And they're amazing. And then this avocado is, I don't know what they're called. Whoa. No avocado. Yeah. It's one of these. Yeah. <laughs> and so you got, you know, a bunch of good fats with the avocado and this little side dish. So you can kind of, you know, I like to take a uh, little mouthfuls of pasta with my, with my tostitos <laughs> and just like eat it like that. So. Oh, that looks great. I know. Wow. 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 So we're going to start serving it. And yeah. let's first pour the pasta in here. And I just put it right in the middle. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's a fun idea because I'll tell you what, is that sometimes it's how you arrange the food. It's easy. If you make a big bowl of pasta, it's easy to eat the whole thing. But this is a good way to cut down on eating too much pasta. <laughs> that's, that's how you stay so thin, I can tell now. Well, I, I'll, I'm telling you, I usually have seconds. So <laughs> I, one of the reasons why I stay in shape is because I like and I love, love working out. Uh, so I, I put a lot of work into my workouts, but it's not because of being, it's not like because I want to be skinny or I want to be thin. It's not that. It's because I love the process. I actually enjoy working out. So it's something that I truly, truly enjoy. Okay. I'll have what you're having. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm about to pour the sauce. It's looking so delicious. Oh my oh. goodness. Wow. This I mean, a, can you, and, and you guys, know? listen, I'm going to have to ask you before you dive in, just dive in separate because I want to get some bit, shots of that photos for our website. So we need can some we photos. I mean, yeah, this is beautiful. Gorgeous. I've never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So please don't eat that one. We want to take photos of that for our website. Uh, okay? okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I will. A bunch of and landscape then, photos. A little bit of salt. I don't like to use too much salt in my meals, but when I do, it's just a little sprinkle. And this is just for the avocado. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top. And then that's pretty much it. Oh, wow. oh one more surprise, Jane, one more surprise, because I okay. sometimes like to go a little extra. And yeah. I actually decided to get some, let me just move some things over here so that I can show you. Mm -hmm. You cannot have pasta without vegan cheese because to me, it's something that I got used to since I was little. And when I turned vegan, a lot of times people used to tell me, what about the cheese, but the cheese? And I'm like, guess what? There's actually a lot of vegan cheese options yeah. that are. Yeah, yeah, those are, that's follow your heart. And this is uh, an incredible brand, follow your heart Parmesan. It's almost it's it's pretty much impossible to tell that that's not yeah. that that's not Parmesan. Like it is Parmesan. It's just it not is. Parmesan from an animal. It's absolutely one hundred percent cruelty free, delicious. It smells, tastes, and 
actual let's see the actual food. Let's just see it. Let's see it. I'd love to see it. Oh my gosh, that it, it is Parmesan. It's just not Parmesan from the breast milk of a cow. Thank you, thank you. You don't have to feel guilty about this yeah. because it's yeah. one hundred percent cruelty free. Zero cholesterol, and it's only ninety calories per serving. So, in case you're you know watching your calories, way less fat, way less calories than your regular you know, cheese from a cow. So uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take a little hand spoon, uh, a little handful, and I'm just going to sprinkle it on top. Mm -hmm. So now it's looking even more amazing than before. And um, I don't know, Jane, I think I might need to just go <laughs> and eat. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, this is looking amazing. And let's two, see. let's see one more. Oh my gosh. Oh my I mean, can we okay. I need I need your buddy to take good photos. Really gonna take <laughs> photos of those because that is a dish. I want to do that from now on. Uh, it's so gorgeous. Yeah, there we go. It's delicious is nutritious and is incredible because you don't have to feel guilty about anything. You just eat and it's actually good for you because it has tons of protein, antioxidants, vitamins. You're getting a lot of iron. I used to be anemic. So uh -huh. for me, it's important to make sure that I'm eating a balanced diet and this is everything you need. And you can always have a salad on the side, uh, whatever you want, but this right here will keep you satisfied and also provide all the nutrients that you need. So. I just want to ask you a couple of quick <laughs> questions. Uh, I know okay. you're a very busy lady. And as we mentioned before, you have uh, 72,000 followers. <laughs> on Instagram, Carol and 14. So check it out. Carolina Gutierrez, Latina actor, entrepreneur, vegan, trans activist. <laughs> T tell us your journey. Um, your journey to who you are today. Yes. What, what was the transformation? Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, I, I was born in Colombia. So when I was in Colombia, I was going to check this out. An all boys Catholic high school. Well, not high school, school. It was yeah. a it, it was a private Catholic school. And I was bullied every single day. So I don't want to get sappy and start crying here on camera, but it was really one of the hardest times of my life. I well, uh, unfortunately was it because they I mean you were not in your transition no, so what, I was in transition was the basis in your opinion like why were you bullied I was bullied because I was different because I acted like any other little girl that you could ever imagine I, and I'm being stereotypical right now but I I was very girly I was very feminine growing up and I wasn't trying to be feminine I was just feminine period because I was acting by instinct I never thought about it twice I was simply just being myself but being myself was not allowed because apparently you're not allowed to be feminine and allowed to be a boy at the same time now let me get this straight I was never a boy I always and felt and in, in my brain I was a girl but unfortunately, nature played a little trick on me and my body was developing male, but I was really always a woman. So once we moved to the US with my family, I went to high school here. I went to college, USF, go Bulls, here in Tampa, Florida. I got a degree in international business and marketing. I thought that I could live my life as this boy, but really, I was always Carolina inside. And finally, one day I decided, you know what? I cannot live this lie any longer. It's eating me up inside. So I started taking all the steps necessary to transition, not only physically, socially, but <clears throat> excuse me, legally as myself. And it took many years. But now I'm here and I'm so happy to be able to live my life 100% authentically, no apologies. I know who I am. I know that I was born to be Carolina, a woman, a transgender, Latin ex woman. 
and I'm very proud of my identity. I'm very proud of myself and my community. And I will never stop fighting for our rights. I, I will never stop fighting for vegan, veganism and animal rights. And I will never keep quiet when it comes to um, searching for equality uh, and for, for people to understand that we are all deserving of the same justice, love and respect as everyone else. That was truly beautiful. Thank you for sharing your courageous story. As Oscar Wilde said, be yourself. Everybody yes. else is already taken. <laughs> I have it right here on my refrigerator. I love that. That is one of my favorite quotes. Be yourself. Everybody else is already, already taken. taken. Oscar Thank you. Wilde, right 100%. up my refrigerator. Because that's the journey okay. of life is to understand yourself and also yeah. to have empathy for others. And you've combined both of those yes. into an amazing trans activist and animal activist and vegan chef. And now let me just ask you one last question. You're, you're an actor as well. You are in yes. Hollywood. Tell us about how that's going because, well, I actually have two questions. Because I don't get a chance to talk to a, a famous trans activist every day. So I'm going to take my uh, opportunities. Who's vegan? I'm an open book. I'm an yeah. open book. But, but um, A, obviously, there's been a lot of progress, I would say, on the trans issue in recent years um, yeah. from you know, notable, um, notable figures in public life coming out as trans. Do you sense a change? Do you feel more accepted? That's question number one. So hit that one. Okay, question number one. Yes and no. One, because yes, there are so many more people that are coming out that are being visible, not only in Hollywood, but in so many other fields in society. We're talking politics. We're talking business. We're talking every everything people are starting to say, hey, I'm trans and I am a human being and I deserve to live my life out loud and visible. But then at the same time, we're also experiencing a lot of backlash. And I say this because I don't know if you've heard the news or if you've seen the posts, but the more we become known as a community, the more deaths we're seeing, the more black trans women are being killed on a regular basis, Jane, this is an epidemic that we're experiencing in our community all over the world. And it's very unfortunate. And I hate to say this, but it's almost every week that we I see a post from another fellow trans person saying another person has been killed for being trans. Another person has been murdered, has been attacked, has been violently attacked in public. I mean, recently there were three transgender women, one of them that I knew from when I was in LA, because I'm currently in Florida visiting, but when I was in LA, um, a lot of, um, there was this one trans woman and her friends who were attacked on the streets of Hollywood and it was all filmed and it was a vicious attack and it was disgusting. And I cannot believe that in 2020, actually, let me rephrase that. I can believe that in 2020, I'm seeing things like that because we're seeing so much awful coming out of, you know, out of this year. But I think it's only a veil that has been lifted and it's showing us a very sad reality that we need to continue to work on and we need to continue to educate others so that this doesn't happen anymore. So, yes. And when I meant you're in Hollywood, I meant you're pursuing your acting career. You're right now in Florida, but you are always going back to Hollywood. So tell us about your acting career. How does that play out? Okay, Hollywood has been tough. It's not easy. It's very competitive. I have the opportunity to work on various projects. I'm talking from independent films all the way to music videos, commercials, PSA videos. There's actually a video that I just promoted on my Instagram. If you check out my social media at Carolyn14, I was part of this amazing PSA short film called Lick Girl. I play one of the main characters where we talk about love, sex, and relationships in the transgender community, specifically for trans women. I got to play a character named Valentina who needs to come out as a transgender woman 
at a bar talking to this guy and it's this entire thing. You need to watch it. It's on my YouTube channel, Carol Land. And also I've had the chance to work with various um, actors in Hollywood, like I said, in different projects. But unfortunately, I still haven't had a chance to show everything that I can do. So I'm praying and hoping that one of my auditions will, you know, put me in that um, platform because it's been rough. It's been hard, especially this year with COVID, COVID yeah. and everything. It's, it's just well, been a little rough, but I'm still auditioning. I'm still working on my goals and I don't intend on backing down anytime soon. So I think somebody not, needs to write an independent film for you um, based Thank on the you. story and then you can play yourself. I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina, I'm so ready. I just want to say thank you so much. It's been really oh my gosh. privilege and fun. And you are a great so chef. Fun. I can't wait thank to see you. the photos and the recipe so we can put it on janeunchained.com. Remember, Lunch Break Live airs every single day since Facebook Live launched several years ago. We decided to do a, a daily vegan cooking show. We've never missed a day and we've never repeated a recipe not intentionally just by accident that's how much variety there is in vegan cooking and every single show is a miracle in its own right look at that you are <laughs> you are such an inspiration thank you so much and i can't thank wait you. to work together with you again let's cook up a project absolutely i just want to take a second to say thank you jane so so much for having me on your show it's such a pleasure from the moment that I met you doing the panel with Fake, I, yeah, I I just immediately felt connected to you and for everything that you're doing, thank you. In behalf of the LGBT community, in behalf of transgender people, in behalf of animals and the environment and everything that you stand for, thank you so, so much for what you're doing. So, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. We would love to have you back. And let's seriously, let's think of things to do. And I just want to say, I'm here. I'm here. The <laughs> message of this live is that we are all earthlings and it's time to start loving each other and respecting 100%. each other and treating <laughs> every sentient being with kindness. Mwah! Thank you again. Talk soon. Bye. Bye, guys.